I didn't bother putting much detail in the drawing of the bird because I'm going to cover it with PVO drawing gum. It's a masking compound that keeps the paper perfectly white until I'm ready to paint it. I'm putting it on with the incredible nib. You can put the masking on with the paintbrush, but it often ruins your paintbrush. The bird is masked out and the masking is dry. I tilt the board up just a little bit on a roll of masking tape. I work on dry paper and I'm doing a very light wash of cerulean blue and cobalt blue. I like to mix these in old cat food cans because it fits my brush really well and it keeps the wash from spreading all over my palette. Now it's dry. The blue color will really be at the top. So I'm going to paint the sand color right on top of that blue wash. And again, I start at the top where I want the sand color to be. You need to use the biggest brush you can. And for doing a big wash, a large flat brush, a one and a half or a two inch is really the best. I try to carefully bring it across and then I can do another quick wash. I work on dry paper because it helps keep the intensity of the paint from being diluted. But you have to work on a tilted board and fairly fast to get a smooth wash. Now the small areas between the blue waves, I'm using the exact same color, but I'm putting those on with a smaller brush. Now that they're done, that light blue wash that I used doesn't look very dark. So I'm going to take the same blue and fill it in at the top. But before I do that, I still think the intensity on that sand wash is too light. So I'm going to give it one more wash with the exact same color. A good tip is to mix up way more wash than you think you're going to need so you don't run out then you don't have to worry about matching the color later. I want to keep that top line pretty exact, so I'm going to take the small brush to do the top line really fast. And I'll get it done before the bottom line starts to dry, so I can just continue that wash all the way down. You notice I don't go back up into the wash I've completed. That helps keep it nice and smooth. Now it's dried lighter, and that's just about what I want. I filled the blue in. And there's a lot of little rocks on the beach. So I'm going to carefully paint them all about the value I want. And you can see there's a lot of hard edges in this. I really want this a lot softer. So what I'm going to do is take clean water and wet down this whole picture. Start at the top just like I would with the wash and wet it all down. Then I'm going to take a thirsty brush while it's still wet and lift up a little bit of that wash. Because it's wet, working wet and wet, you get really nice soft edges. So I have now a medium and some light areas. And I'm going to take the leftover wash and put in the same color for some darker areas.
Now I'm going to work on the background just a little bit. I put on just clean water and lift up the top of those waves to make it a little bit lighter. Then I come back with more blue underneath and I have a nice soft look. Now I can go back and I can redo a few of the rocks. I can leave most of them soft and blurry, but make a few of the ones that are closer to me more distinct. I also have to put the dark back in the reflections. And now the background is complete. You can take the masking off with a masking remover, but sometimes it scratches my paper. So I'm just using my fingers. And since it's just one big area, I'm going to pull it off. Boop! And there I'm ready to paint the center of interest, the bird.